This presentation discusses the enigma of the Carolina Bays in New Jersey. Most of the basins in North and South Carolina are oriented toward the Great Lakes, but New Jersey has some basins oriented toward Hudson Bay. This is unexpected. Typical well-preserved Carolina Bays have elliptical geometry, thick raised rims on their southwest, and consistent orientation of the major axes toward the Great Lakes. This LiDAR image illustrates all these features, including the fact that many bays overlap while retaining their elliptical geometry. The mathematically elliptical geometry of the Carolina Bays can be confirmed by plotting points along their perimeter and fitting the points with ellipses using the least squares method. Ellipses are conic sections, and this implies that the Carolina Bays originated as inclined conical cavities, as can be confirmed by impact experiments on a viscous target. The glacier ice impact hypothesis proposes that the Carolina Bays formed from impacts of glacier ice ejected by one or more extraterrestrial impacts on the Laurentide Ice Sheet during the Ice Age. New Jersey has few elliptical Carolina Bays. This LiDAR image around the town of Friendship, New Jersey, shows many circular Carolina Bays that look like the scars of a shotgun blast. Most of these bays measure approximately 200 meters in diameter, and because they are almost circular, it is almost impossible to determine their orientation. New Jersey also has many Carolina Bays shaped like guitar picks. This is a characteristic that is usually found on inclined terrain. These geological features are located approximately 2 miles southeast of Budtown, New Jersey. In South Carolina along the Savannah River, there are many Carolina Bays on inclined terrain that have the guitar pick shape. Notice that all the flattened portions on the north side of the base are at higher elevation than the base themselves. A downhill impact creates an inclined conical cavity with a steeper grade on the rear part of the penetration funnel. During viscous relaxation, liquefied soil flows into the rear of the basin while the whole hillside slides downward and stretches the basin. The downhill impact modification can be modeled by tilting the impact target in the direction of the impact during viscous relaxation. The rear part of the impact cavity is modified by the flow of viscous medium into the cavity as the whole surface slides downhill. This image represents a cross-section of a hillside with penetration funnels on the uphill side and on the downhill side. The red arrows show the direction of the impacts. The front of the cavity made by the uphill impact collapses during viscous relaxation, whereas the cavity made by a downhill impact collapses in the rear. The uphill impact preserves the elliptical geometry in the rear of the cavity, and the downhill impact preserves the elliptical geometry in the front of the cavity. New Jersey also has some elliptical basins. The red arrow shows the location of an elliptical basin on the outskirts of Howell, New Jersey. The large oval structure to the right is a one-mile racetrack. A closer look reveals a well-formed race rim characteristic of the Carolina Bays. Selecting points along the perimeter of the basin and fitting the points with an ellipse shows a good fit. All the points are along the path of the ellipse. This basin has an azimuth of 156.48 degrees. Here is another example of a well-preserved elliptical basin near Cedar Glen Lakes, New Jersey. There are other basins in this image, but most of them are highly eroded. A closer look shows a prominent raised rim around the basin, a fluvial channel leading into the basin from the west, and a straight drainage ditch on the north side leading toward the Pole Bridge branch that eventually flows into the Delaware River in southwestern New Jersey. We can select points along the perimeter of the basin where the rim is well defined and fit an ellipse to the points. The ellipse has a good fit. All the points are along the elliptical curve. This basin has an azimuth of 150.20 degrees. In this image, the arrow points to a faint basin on the highly eroded terrain of the Sui Place preserved in New Jersey. The raised rim on the south side of the basin is quite prominent, but the shape of the basin has been distorted on the northwest side. As usual, we select points along the perimeter of the basin to test its elasticity. Not all the points fall along the path of the ellipse. On the northwest side, some of the points are inside the ellipse because some material flowed from the higher elevation ridge on the north of the basin, causing the deformation. This basin has an azimuth of 164.93 degrees. By extending the azimuths of the basins, we see that they point in the direction of Hudson Bay. A previous study of elliptical features in Minnesota showed that some of their headings were oriented toward the Nastapoca Arc in Hudson Bay. 
I would like to thank Austin Cole, Carlisle, Stephen R. Smith and other subscribers to my channel who have identified the locations of many of these basins. Some researchers have suggested that Lake Nipigon could have been the site of an impact, but the convergence lines tell a different story. The lines meet near the Nastapoca Arc. The idea that some Carolina bays are oriented toward the Hudson Bay area was previously suggested by Richard Firestone in a book published in 2006 and in a 2009 paper. Both his book and his paper were severely criticized by opponents of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, but as we can see, some evidence is building up for Hudson Bay as a source of some of the ice boulders that made elliptical basins. The basins shaped like guitar picks in New Jersey are of the uphill type where the front of the cavity has collapsed. Using the Google Earth ruler, we can estimate that the bay was made by a projectile coming at an azimuth of 134.09 degrees. Extending the line of the azimuth, we find that it leads toward Lake Huron. This is a completely different direction from the elliptical basins that we examined. It seems that New Jersey was bombarded with ice boulders from two different directions. The Nastapoca Arc in Hudson Bay is nearly a perfect arc of a circle with a diameter of 450 kilometers. The Nastapoca Arc has long been suspected of having been made by an extraterrestrial impact, but multiple investigations have failed to find shatter cones, shock quartz, or any evidence of an extraterrestrial impact. In a presentation at the 2006 Philadelphia Annual Meeting of the Geological Society of America, Michael Brookfield proposed reinvestigating the Great Arc of Eastern Hudson Bay because apart from an impact, no other plausible explanation has been proposed for this great ring fracture. Very little has been published on the Hudson Bay Arc since 1968. The orientation of elliptical basins similar to the Carolina Bays toward the Great Lakes and Hudson Bay increases the complexity and deepens the mystery of the history of our planet. There are no simple answers. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. The Carolina Bays should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic Coastal Plain. There is a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.